Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was always a little more Jim Belushi than Dan Aykroyd. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Missile Command from IDW Games. Missile Command from IDW Games for 3 to 6 players is based on the old Atari 2600 console game. Now, if you played this game, you know it's all about defending cities from incoming missiles that will destroy them. You had a little cursor, you'd kind of fly around and you try to protect these uh, uh you try to essentially set up these plumes that would de destroy and detonate incoming warheads against cities. It was a science fiction game. Uh, I played this as a kid a lot. It was great fun. Very rudimentary by today's standards. I'm sure you can find versions of it online or in apps or whatever. But it was a very fun game uh, when I was a kid back in the 1980s. And now they've actually gone ahead and updated the technology to bring it to you in board game form. Now, essentially, each player is going to get several items. They're going to get a player screen. They're going to kind of get their, their own kind of vector sheet with, with, with uh, six um, spaces on it. They're going to get their own cities. They have six cities on it, number one through six, and the vector sheets are numbered one through six. Now, what's going to happen is the game is going to play out in a few phases. Now, everybody's, their, their, their cities, their, their, their player shields have a distinct color to them. In the center of the game, you're going to put a number of colored cubes, as well as some interceptors, as well as some um, nuclear bombs. Now, what's going to happen is uh, the game is going to play out in four phases. Now, the very first thing you're going to do is negotiate. You're essentially going to say, you've got a hard time limit on this, just a few minutes. You're going to say, look, I won't attack you, you don't attack me, and no one's bound by anything you say, but you can make deals. You can say, I, I can bribe you, I can, we can trade. And the whole point here is you're trying to, to, to either lull people into a false sense of security or make legitimate deals for your own security. Now, toward the end of the negotiation phase, you're actually going to be buying things. You're going to be buying missiles from the center, you're going to buy the nuclear bombs in the center, and you're going to buy interceptors in the center. Now, the missiles are distinct colors, so if I'm blue and I buy a green missile, obviously the green guy knows I can potentially attack him because I've got a green missile. But you're going to buy several missiles, so you might buy one of each or just concentrate on one color. There's different things you're going to do there. You are also going to have the opportunity to buy uh, nuclear missiles, which I'll talk more about those later, and interceptors. We'll talk about the later as well. So after you have the negotiation done, then you plan. Essentially what you do is behind your player screen, you look at your kind of your, your vector sheet, and you take a, say if you want to attack uh, blue, uh, Blue's city number two. So you go ahead, you take a blue cube, and you put it on number two of your vector. Now you can only put one cube in a vector, and what that means is you are attacking his number two city, then you know it's, you're going after blue because it's a blue cube. But you can go ahead and you can put these all over in the, in the different spaces as much as you want. You can You can fill up all six of them, you don't have to do any of them, but you can essentially plan. Now, you're remembering those agreements you made before, are you going to break them or are you going to stick to them? Now, in phase three, you, of course, reveal. Everybody reveals their uh, sheets. Now, what happens is, if I've got a blue, if I'm, say I'm red, and I've got a blue on one, well, if, if uh, blue has a red on one, our two missiles, boom, they hit each other and not, they cancel each other out. So that's essentially what you're trying to do, is you can knock other play people's uh, incoming missiles out with your own missiles aimed at their cities. The problem is, if they're not shooting a missile at you, you are taking out one of their cities. And if they can't defend it, they lost a city. But there are different ways they can defend it. For instance, if you have interceptor tokens, you can spend an interceptor token to cancel out that hit. So that's a way of, of deflecting it uh, without having to provoke uh, your own uh, attack against somebody. Also, too, if you use a nuclear bomb, you have to attach a nuclear bomb to a cube. So you would put it in the same uh, vector with your cube. What that means is that not only attacks and hits the city it uh, is aimed at, it will also destroy an adjacent city as well. So after you go through and you see whose cities are destroyed and you get all that cleared up, then you move to the fourth phase. Now the fourth phase is you have little cards which are distributed randomly throughout the game on each of your city uh, spaces. And any city that is destroyed, you flip it over to its destroyed side. Now that the city is destroyed, you actually get certain bonuses. You may get some more money, you may get some um, other little funky thing will happen when somebody takes a certain action in the game. But little bonuses occur as your, more of your cities are destroyed. Now, depending on if your cities are still uh, alive, you do get some money there. You collect money for that. You collect money if you get bonuses on destroyed cities and any other bonuses they give you. You get all that money, and then you go back to the next uh, phase one, which, again, is negotiating. Now, 
you go through this several rounds until the game will end when one person, one player, at the end of round three, has all of their cities destroyed. As soon as all of their cities are destroyed, the game ends. Now, that does not necessarily mean that person uh, lost. You actually then go to scoring. So you gain points through different ways. There's scoring tokens you can get. If you've got those, you gain uh, points for that. If you have cities that are not destroyed at the end of the game, you gain points for that. For every four uh, GDP, that's the currency you have, you get one point for that. For every four missiles and or interceptors you have, you gain one point. You gain no additional points for any unused nuclear bombs. So you tally up all those points. Whoever has the most points at the end wins Missile Command. So Missile Command is a very interesting game. Like I say, I played the video game a ton when I was a kid in the 80s, and I was actually I was watching some documentary on it on, on like Atari, and they said that when they actually made that game, it was originally going to be about defending the United States from incoming nuclear missiles and have a Cold War theme, but they thought it would be too scary, so they decided to make it a science fiction theme. Okay, whatever. But <clears throat> I remember playing that game a lot when I was a kid, and I absolutely loved it. I was interested in it when I saw... The board game version of this game, um, just because, kind of for the nostalgia factor. <clears throat> so it's an IDW game, um, and they, they went ahead and they sent this out to me, and so I'm taking a look at it, and I'm playing it with my friends. And first of all, you know I love negotiation games. Negotiation games are a lot of fun, and I, like, I do like the give and take here. And I like the fact that you're legitimately, you don't want to attack somebody, but maybe you don't trust them. So you work out a deal, but the only way you can defend against them is with interceptors, unless you want to program your missiles to go after their cities. But if you do that, and you're wrong, and they didn't attack you, you just bombed the crap out of them. So there's kind of an interesting kind of prisoner's dilemma thing going on there that I really like. Um, this is a, a game, there's not much to it. There's, there's, you know, a lot of luck in those bonuses that come up, a lot of luck. There's, some of those can be very powerful, um, and frankly overpowered, I think, some of them. Um, but the beauty of this game is, it is short. These games are short. You're looking at about, you know, a half an hour or so for a game. These are quick, fun games, but this is a game you pull out, play really quick, and have fun with it. Um, like I say, it's it's. I don't think this is a game for everybody, um, just because I think some people will be too frustrated with some of the luck factor that comes up, um, and there's a meanness factor here, too, and some people may not like that. Me, I, I enjoy this package for what it is. If this were a longer game with essentially these mechanics, I wouldn't care for it, but given the brevity of it, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of fun. So uh, the recommendation for the Discriminated Gamer is try it before you buy it, but it's a very positive try it before you buy it. Uh, if you're like me, you like negotiation, and, and you do like a little chance, you don't mind a little chance, I think you'll get a kick out of it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say something right now that's going to be a little controversial. I may lose friends over it, but I don't care. Jim Belushi is no John Belushi. Hey somebody help me on my feet again and I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Hey somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Ah, I, I think I understand. Oh, oh. And I'm not oh. Sorry. because you can, huh? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You've nuked her! Twice!